All right. Welcome to our second installment of Module 3 in EDAP 688. I'm going to take a little bit of time here before I jump into our stated purpose of tonight's class, which is to do the facets of understanding. Um, and then I thought we would take some time and let me kind of uh, fumble and stumble my way through Powtoons, which is the tool that you'll use to do your under demonstration of understanding of the six facets of understanding. But let's let's back up a second. Oh, and the other thing we're going to do, although we'll see, um, you know, I don't have a problem with doing a third one of these to actually do the UBD template. I'd rather take our time and get all this right because, in case you haven't noticed, we're rapidly uh, finishing up here. So let's take a big step back and talk UBD for a second. Last week we looked at Grant explaining it all to us, and I don't want to lose the important part of what he was saying to us. First of all, UBD is not a curriculum. It is a framework. It is a framework for implementing our curriculum. There are three ways of looking at what UBD is about, or three big ideas, excuse me. There is acquiring, there is meaning making, and there's transfer. What we mean by those is pretty straightforward, really, if you think about it. So when we talk about acquiring information, knowledge, learning, we're saying that we want to help the kid acquire factual information and basic skills. Simple as that. Acquiring is nothing more than doing what we do as teachers. And it might look like, and most of the time it does, look like direct instruction. Now, we know from our studies of Shulman, TPAC, and all of that, that pedagogical slides are what we expect to see, even within direct instruction. But the acquisition piece of understanding by design can be formative assessments, can be diagnostic assessments, it can be lecture, it can be organizers, it can be all of those things, guided practice, process guides, feedback information, differentiation, all that follows, follows into when we talk about acquiring within the UBD framework. So there's nothing here that's any different. It's what we do. And this is where it starts to get a little bit different, but I still think we're here. So when we get to the make meaning piece, the whole idea is to help students construct meaning, to come to an understanding of important ideas. So when we're at this, when we're in this role, we're basically engaging kids to actively think about what they are doing and how it then fits into the acquisition piece. How did we take the acquisition pieces and make meaning of them to ourselves? In other words, to, to students, to themselves. We do this all the time. You and I do this all the time. It is a, you know, it's a tenet of constructivism. It's that we take prior knowledge, new knowledge, prior knowledge, makes sense of putting the both of them together. Now, this is the piece where Wiggins and McTeague kind of leave the sort of standard ideas around instruction, and that is transfer. Although nowadays, it's, it's not all that, you know, Yes, we should be doing transfer of knowledge. So what we're trying to do with this one is we're trying to get kids to transfer their learning, what they've learned through the various ways that we've had them do meaning making. And then to say, okay, so if that's the way it is, 
In other words, here's my understanding of it. Then this is how it would be in this new situation that I would encounter. Math is very simple to do with this. That's just science for that matter. So, you know, we teach kids the algorithms. We teach them how to do things, the step by step, the understandings. We then ask them to solve problems. I'm not in the meaning making yet. I'm still in acquisition. So we ask them to do that. Then we go into meaning making. I mean, we say to them, help me understand what you understand about this. Describe for me how you would apply using slope. Meaning making. And then finally, transfer. This one's been on my brain a lot, so forgive me. Well, they have, um, they redid Houchins, the Houchins building here on campus, University of Louisville. And it has a new accessibility ramp. The whole street is now um, a mall, I guess you would say. In other words, it's not a street anymore. It's a pedestrian mall. And I've watched this all summer long. And I'm sitting there looking at it, and I'm realizing the ramp that they're building is just a straight ramp that goes from the front of the building to street level. It does not have any turns. It doesn't stop at a certain point and turn and go the other way and stop at a certain point, which is what the ramp originally did. It's a straight up the, which would be fine if it were maybe a three or four, heck, even a five step incline. It's not. It's a, that a 13, 14 step incline. Now, hold on, hang with me. So where I'm going with this would be in transfer. Take a look at the amount of run over rise that this ramp represents. And then put together a theory or maybe a presentation about how this either helps or impedes access to that building. This is something that when Wiggins and McTeague first came out with, that all of this was just extraordinary. People were just falling out of their chairs. As I keep saying to you, it underpinned so much of what we now take for granted as standard curriculum thinking. It was revolutionary in its day. So we've talked about this, I hope, enough that in your mind, when you sit down and you start looking at this in terms of um, filling out the form, the, the lesson plan form, that it won't intimidate you. And Wiggins and McTeague, remember, when they were doing this, um, we thought we were really cool because we had computers that could have browsers on them and we could play music, etc. We weren't anywhere near the capability of what we are today with creation. And so using the things that are available, we don't have to go too far crazy with this. We can use the standard kind of things we use where we want to really stretch is when we do transfer. When we do one, we'll talk about that. So I kind of redid, I didn't redo the module, I kind of redid the organization of the module because I thought I wasn't giving enough uh, credence to what we're going to talk about tonight. And that is the six facets of understanding. Now, I hope you've read the chapter because it's in here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to uh, demystify it, I guess, and maybe give you some background knowledge about its, its history and its purpose, what the guys were thinking about it. Um, and I'll try to, to go through the six facets 
explanation, interpretation, application, perspective, empathy, and self-knowledge. Yeah, I did that out of my head. Um, and I'm going to try to help you see what an example of that might look like. And then we need to go into the Paltoon because right away, if you look at the assignment, what Steve is looking for is for you to take those six explanation, interpretation, application, perspective, empathy, and self-knowledge, and then develop a Paltoons. And I'll leave it up to you if you want to do it as a presentation, if you want to do it as a movie, however you want to do it. That then would help me understand your understanding. So a little bit of history. So one of the things that the guys ran into when they first started coming up with UBD was people needed to understand what they were saying when they said there's acquisition and then there's meaning making or making meaning, which we just kind of go, what? Yeah. But at the time, it was so extraordinary for somebody to come along and say, look, all we do is we take this acquisition piece. In other words, we do, here's the demonstration of your understanding of the acquisition piece, uh, vomiting back the information that somebody gave to you on a test or a project or a poster board or a term paper. And so what the guys were arguing about was there's no meaning. There's no meaning of the understanding here. There's no, there's no demonstration of the understanding. There's just, regurgitation. There's just reflections back. So they came up with the facets of understanding. And then they went through a process of people were saying, oh, oh okay, so self-knowledge would be what we're working for, towards. No. <laughs> Simple answer. No, this is not a hierarchy. In other words, when you look at explanation, you go, oh, that would be the lowest one. No, they never meant it to do that. The second piece. People think that you need all six in your lesson plan or even your, your unit. No, 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 no. So you can look at this as a smorgasbord. You know, if you want to have that kind of ability of kids to pick and choose. Yeah, I wouldn't do this right out of the box. <laughs> uh, but they, they could see it working that way. So I'm going to ask you to do a transfer. But first, I need you to do help me understand what you understand. And it might be that you could explain this to the students through demonstrations, et cetera, and then let them pick. Or for the first time that you're doing it, you might dictate which way they can demonstrate their understanding. Now, this isn't as, you know, radical as you might think, you know, of the digital backpack that's going on all over the place right now. One of the things that you see they do in high school is the senior defense. Fancy title, but if you look then at what the guys are talking about, so that idea of you getting up with a uh, digital collection artifacts of your know, stuff you're proudest of in school, maybe that would be something like a explanation, but it also may have application in it. And, of course, self-knowledge. Let me jump into this link. This is a video. I want you to watch it. But I'm going to do it from here. So here are those six, six facets of app of uh, Understanding, explanation, interpretation, application, perspective, empathy, and self-knowledge. Let's go through them. So an explanation, sophisticated app theories and illustrations which 
provide knowledgeable and justified accounts of events, actions, and ideas, knowledge of why and how. That is the key piece. So explanation isn't just a regurgitation of fact. It isn't just a, oh yeah, I can show you that I know how to solve for, is a logical explanation and through the use of knowledge of how and why, whatever it is that I'm talking about. Explanations are deeper than just the fill in the blank or the open-ended question. You are showing that, yes, I understand I have knowledge of facts, but I also see how they fit together. And here are some explanations, illustrations, et cetera, to help you see that. When we say the why and the how, what we're talking about here is the connections. The how do things see in relationship to other things? How do things seem, I should have said, in relationship to other things? To know how something operates or functions so that we can have, when we explain to people, we can understand enough that we can then explain to them all the different aspects of the why and the how. You know, it's that classic line, you really don't know something until you have to teach something to somebody else. Explanation. And then, of course, what we want you to do, we want you to be able to justify that explanation. And we want you to use terms like support, justify, generalize, predict, verify, prove, substantiate. So when you look at interpret, when you look at the whole idea of explanation, it might look like, and, and I'm using ideas here that are technology based in some ways. So a student might develop a brochure to explain the principles and practices, a particular part of whatever. It might be a brochure that helps me understand something. A technical manual, if you will. It might be a PSA, public service announcement. It might be a training video. It might be a PowerPoint. Although, I hope you're learning from, or you learned from my 690 class, that PowerPoints aren't intended to teach. They are, they are intended to present. But explanation is where kids basically is where they're taking information they have and they're applying it and they're saying, okay, so this is why we do what we do. This is why we use the formula in slope to determine rise over run. This is why we use the various instruments that we use to look at how things are in, in the universe. I'm sorry, I'm having trouble here coming up with some explanations of explanation because to me it's very straightforward. When you get to interpretation, this is where you're basically looking at the narratives, the images, the metaphors, and what do they mean? What do they matter? What does this illustrate about the human experience? And what sense does it make? Interpretation. So when we look at this one, we're looking at, when we look for patterns and things, when we look at the narratives of the patterns, how does it transform our understanding and perceptions of particular facts? The Earth traveled around the sun for billions of years, but for, for hundreds of years, we believed the sun traveled around the Earth. How did Galileo, through his understanding of the meetings and patterns that he was seeing, 
was he able to come up with that hypothesis? When a kid has a misunderstanding, they can point out the fact that here's where the problem lies. When I look at interpretation, of course, all of these have a little bit of it in there. I see epistemic agency at work all over the place. Being able to describe what you know, being able to describe where your holes in your knowing might be, and then making sense of all that. When you look at a characteristic of interpretation, they're bound by the personal, social, cultural, and historical context in which they rise. When interpreting, students move between the facts and their own experience to find legitimate but varying interpretations. And boy, do we need to have that now. We need to come to grips with this very complex society that we live in now. And we need to have kids looking at all this ambiguity instead of just coming up with the right answers. We need to have kids be able to look at very complex ideas and, and understand how those ideas can be interpreted through various different lenses. Application. Application is the ability to use knowledge effectively in new situations in diverse context. Hey, how and where can we supply this knowledge, skill, and process, and how can my thinking and action be modified to meet the demands of the particular situation? Can you say scientific method? We need to have real problems that will push kids to look for not just the answer, but the connections back to their previous knowledge. So application is one of those, I think, that people get confused. They think it's a transfer piece that Wiggins and McTeague taught. It's not. It is what we're trying to do is we're trying to get kids to apply their knowledge that they have acquired through instruction, etc., testing, to a situation that the teacher creates. An example of that would be kids sitting down and literally looking at a product, a thing, and then trying to figure out how it all works using the various understandings they have about what someone has taught them. That applies to anything. I said a real product. It doesn't have to be. More importantly, kids apply the idea of this is my theory. This is how I will test my theory. This is how I will review the results of that theory test. And this is how I then will revise my theory. And that applies to everything. It could be something as simple as what would be a more effective way of studying for a test to how can we design a better way to recover uh, rainwater. It's all over the place. 
perspective. It demands critical and insightful points of view. He wants to know from whose point of view. What is assumed or a tacit level that needs to be made explicit? Is there adequate evidence? Is there evidence reasonable? What are the strengths and the weaknesses of the idea? What is a novel way to look at this? Perspective is used, you see this a lot in social studies kinds of things. Hello. Um, and what we're trying to do with perspective is we're trying to look at it through a different way of looking at it. Right now, a perspective might be in social studies, might be an examination of the immigrant situation we have here in the United States. So we would have the information acquisition part would be the long history of immigration in the United States. We have a bad habit of looking at things through very short lenses. So last five years, when immigration in this country has been since its very beginning, right? The only true natives to this country are the Native Americans that live here. The pilgrims and everybody else from then on out were just immigrants. So we are trying to see a perspective of why do people want to come to this country? Why is everybody in such a hurry to get here? And then we can look at it from the different ways that it's reported. Well, the reason why everybody wants to come here is because they think they can get a free ride. Or the perspective of people want to come here to enjoy the freedom and the opportunity that America represents. You see, perspective here is what you would use to take a look at. So why do we, historically, why is it this way? And what's the evidence? Again, what we're trying to do here is we're trying to confront the new ideas. Kind of dangerous. This is where we're trying to critically analyze. So why do we have this point of view? Is it just political? Or is there any basis for it in true facts, in historical facts, and in cultural? Empathy. Walk a mile in another person's shoes. Um, one of the best ones I ever saw of this was my young friend, Christine Mudd, who teaches now over at Hawthorne, who was out at uh, Greenwood Elementary. When she did her Native American unit, she had the kids do the classic acquisition. So we did, we did the classic break up into the various Native American groups that were, that are historical, uh, that are represented in most textbooks, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so groups of kids had to own one of those groups. Southeastern Native Americans, Northeastern Plains, Northwestern, Desert, Southwestern. And so what they did was the kids had to work up an explanation of the history, the culture, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We're good at that. We're really good at that. And she used some really nice technological tools to do all that with. And then she threw them the loop. Create a PSA that you would play, public service announcement by the way, PSA, that you would use to convey either the plight, situation, challenges of Native Americans today. Walk in the moccasins, for a mile. Moccasins, I shouldn't have said that. I should have said shoes. I apologize to all my Lakota Sioux friends. We, empathy, I think, is one of the best to do 
It's also one of the hardest. It's really hard to, to see what others see. It's also a way for us to challenge our own assumptions about something. I remember a principal doing this, a principal who was uh, very, very, <laughs> very well educated about Wiggins and McTeague because we sat in the same um, training sessions. But she took her teachers at her school, which was a, a central city school. It was a, it was not in the West End. It was more well, down here around around U of L. But it wasn't Cochran. It wasn't that close. But it was still a, a school that drew from the center city. And her faculty was mostly white, and her children were mostly people of color. And her stakeholders were mostly people of color. And so she took her, and she had a great faculty. She took that faculty and she handed them digital cameras. This was new. The whole idea of being able to walk around with the camera. Because now we'd laugh and say, well, why didn't you use your phone? But back then it was cool to walk around with a little box and take pictures. And so what the teachers did is they then walked the neighborhood that their school was located in. And the directions they were given was take pictures of what you see in the neighborhood that helps you reflect upon why teaching here is the way that it is. So the teachers came back and they, they downloaded all of these pictures they had taken. And then they worked together in grade groups and they put together their own little grade group, you know, presentations, PowerPoints, about how they saw the, the area that their school represented, that it taught to. Then the teacher did the same thing with students. Brave of her, because she let them walk out, which at the time were fairly expensive pieces of equipment, but she believed in her students. So they went around, did the same thing. Take the pictures of your neighborhood that you think best represent the neighborhood And why you like being here. So when you looked at the two, when you looked at the two, the teacher's bulletin board was made up of things like overflowing trash cans, busy streets, cars flying by, people sitting in doorways. The various businesses I remember one of my favorite pictures was somebody took a picture of a Hell's Angels uh, clubhouse. The student pictures showed people sitting on steps in doorways talking to each other. The student pictures showed kids playing. The student pictures showed them playing in the parks. The student pictures showed people holding their pets, empathy. So the assumptions that of the teachers were, we live, we work in a difficult neighborhood. And this is why, or this is how we can document that. The kids assumptions were, we love where we live. And we'll show you why. And I think this is something that we need to do a lot. <laughs> we need to do a lot. We, we need to do this kind of um, exercise, especially with our ESL children in schools. We need to have that, uh, that moment in time where our assumptions about the different cultures that ESL represents in our school, that we get an opportunity to not only see it, the perspective, but we have the empathy. And we just have the fun. The explanation.
Self-knowledge. This is epistemic agency. It's the wisdom to know one's ignorance and how one's patterns of thoughts and action inform as well as prejudice understanding. We used to, when I got through with my training with Wiggins and McTighe, we called this stand and defend. So when I see this senior defense thing going on now, I kind of smile. But I think the whole idea, stand to defend, the whole, the whole purpose of stand to defend was not just, did you know? Did you know? It was, this is what I thought. It was wrong. And this is what I realize now. Or it was, I started out doing this, or I started out using this, and I realized that it didn't really work with the situation. And that was because I didn't have a better understanding of it. This whole point of self-knowledge isn't necessarily just to stand there and say, well, I was really dumb about that. It is to stand and say, here are the strengths that I bring to this. Here are my understandings. The whole point of metacognition is we are able to express, this is how I learn. And this is why the way I learn makes sense in this particular situation. It's not necessarily that I can't do the task. I can't do the task the way you want me to do the task. I can do the task the way that I see how the task ought to be done. Now, you know, you can say, well, that doesn't really give us any real concrete evidence the kid knows what they're doing. I would disagree 100%. If the kid can sit there and say, this is what it means, and this is what it does not mean, this is what I understand, this is what I don't understand, wouldn't your life be a lot easier as a teacher? Mr. or Mrs. Teacher, instead of a 500-word essay, could I create an infographic to show you the relationships between visual things? I don't mean the visual things in terms of, say, an apple compared to an orange. I say an apple that stands in to reflect a concept. Kids think that way, by the way. You'll sit in a kindergarten class and watch sometime. You see them doing it all the time. You know, it's, it's when you look at little children... You see learning so clearly and the difficulties of learning so clearly that it's amazing to me how we get kids to kindergarten. <laughs> you watch little kids who are basically using their own language and words to describe things. And then they realize that eh, everybody else isn't saying that. <laughs> And so they start using the words and the descriptions that they use that they hear everyone else doing. And isn't it a shame that we lose that? We lose that ability to sit there and say, okay, we know it's called this, and therefore it has this kinds of things associated with it. But what if I also thought it was this as well? In other words, it shared associations with other things. Huh. What would I call that? We know that when we pass an electrical current through a wire, that we lose some of the electricity to heat and light due to the nature of conductivity. And we can do experiments with that. So we know those things through experiment or just through knowledge. You know, it's someone who told you. What would happen if I started running electricity through different kinds of things, different kinds of wires, or just different kinds of things altogether? Just to see. 
to take another perspective. My understanding, my self-knowledge, tells me this. What I don't know, I go and find out, and it tells me something else. And I put all this together, and I create a light bulb. I don't know if that, that's how I did it. In fact, I, I know that the way it was done was through a collaborative effort, but that's another talk for another class. So, six facets of understanding. I'm going to stop it here. What I want you to do is, this is also very good, by the way. I'll play it just for a sec. I'll stop. It's a good one. She does a nice job. If you go above it, I mean, I'm sorry, if you go below it, here's another one. Take the time to get this into your head. Because this then will inform you on how you want to set up your lesson plan. Let's review. The six facets of understanding are not hierarchical. There is no one facet over another one. The six facets, explanation, interpretation, application, perspective, empathy, self-knowledge, they are a tool, a medium for you to use so that kids can do demonstrations and transfer of knowledge. That's their point. So when you look at the six facets of understanding, what you're looking for there is, okay, would I use this in a lesson plan where I'm going to be having kids learn about the water cycle? And if I did, if, I, if that's what I'm teaching, then what do I see here as a good way of having kids do that? Hmm. Well, it might be through application because there's an awful lot of vocabulary and an awful lot of, of uh, how things work going on inside the water cycle. So I might want them to do application. Okay. So that's the, that is the purpose of the six facets of understanding. Now, let's go back and look at, and I, I do think we're going to we're going to do this, and then we're going to do the lesson plan next week. Because I really want you to get this. So you're going to read in here. You're going to read in your textbook. You're going to look at these again. And then we're going to go look at something called a Powtoon. So let me back up here. So what is a Powtoon? Well, I think a Powtoon is the way that Prezi wanted to be. You know what a Prezi is. You know, the, the Prezi that is the PowerPoint to make us all motion sick. Um, and I think what, power to, what Powtoons did is they also took that idea of the whiteboard that we've seen a million times where you see the, the mystery hand writing on the whiteboard. And they then incorporated the ability to have motion without making you sick with it. And then they basically took the whole concept of presentation. So this is the tutorial right here. Uh, it's a very good tutorial. So I definitely would watch it. 
uh, especially as I kind of fumble my way through it. I'm not, I, I'm not a, uh, by any means, more than proficient with uh, Palatoons. I like, I like Palatoons. But um, it's one of those tools where every time I sit down and play with it, I find something new, which is what I love about uh, these technologies I show you guys. Every time I sit down and play with it, I come up with something new that I didn't know. Today, before class, I sat, was looking at it, and I was, was watching some Palatoons, and I was going, how in the world do they do that music? Then I come to find out it's simple as, you know, click, click. It's, it's nothing to it. I don't even know if it's important, if it's uh, something important. Um, you know, Mayor would maybe argue it might be a violation of one of his principles, specifically keeping the extraneous material out. Eh. So let's look at how it works. So you're going to go in uh, and you're going to go in with a free account. Okay. And when you do that, it will give you access to a few of the templates. But when I looked at it, I used to have a lot of uh, Powtoon. I used to have a Powtoon's account that I gladly shared with everybody. But um, I quit doing it just because a lot of people didn't like using it, frankly. So, you know, okay, fine. So here's the landing pad. This is where you end up or you come into. I'm going to do a start now. And when it does that, it's going to ask me to create an account, da, 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 which I already have. And maybe I should log out so you can see what it's like. See, I'm over here. Let's do that because I want you to see what it looks like from the very beginning. Okay, so here we are. So what I did when I came in is I go up here to log in. I just use my connect with Google. Okay. I just use my, my Google account, mainly because it's something I know. <laughs> uh, I don't have to stumble around for the password. And especially if I'm working with inside of Chrome, hey, hey, it automatically fills everything in for me. So I'm going to go in with my Googly account, and it throws me right in here. Now, First question you need to ask, and is there a right answer? No, there is not. This is where I want you to play. Think about how you want to do this. What type of Palatoon do you want to create? Well, what was that thing again? What are we supposed to do? Steve wants us to illustrate our understandings of what explanation, interpretation, application, perspective, empathy, and self-knowledge are. Okay, so maybe what I ought to do is take a look at these, because right off the bat, my eyes drawn to here. Presentation. Mainly because it kind of strikes me as a PowerPoint-y kind of thing. Well, right away I got some problems, don't I? But that's okay. I can still preview things because I could go off and make my own, okay? So I'll preview one of these just to get a sense of what it looks like. Hmm. Okay. So I might think about doing it this way because I could go in and use the various tools to do a demonstration of what each one of the each one of the facets are. All right, let's go over here to explainer video. Now in an explainer video, I've got some stuff here that I can play around with uh, that looks kind of familiar. Let's see. Can I use this one? So when I do one that is a template that I can play with, it starts me off with seeing the whole shooting match. In other words, what, what all is in here. And just like in Pick the Chart or the other infographic tools, the VisMe that we use, you can go in here and you can change up how you want things to work on the slides. So the slides are pretty simple. Uh, they're just waiting for you to add things to them. Okay. I can go in. And if I want to get rid of something, you know the drill by now. You hit your backspace or delete key. And everything on here is an object. 
Okay, and then you have your text boxes right here. Where do you get stuff from? Right here where it says add. If you need something to help you, you can turn on a grid line. So that drives me nuts. So I don't turn that on. So here's the add button. So here's where everything lives, essentially. Okay. So I can go down through here and I can see that, oh my goodness. I've got a lot of stuff here that I can play in. And one of the things, like I said earlier, I was trying to figure out how to put this music in here. It's right down here. It's called sound. Oh. Now, when you click on here, here's the thing. We're in freebie land. And it won't let me swap the current soundtrack. So in other words, what I'm using in here is what I'm stuck with. Oh, well, it's not bad. I don't know if you can hear that very well. It's, yeah, it's okay. It's not. And do I need to have it, Steve? No. No, you decide if you think it would be something worthwhile. I'll turn it off. All right, let's go back. And let's look at another one. another template so that was the sort of explainer video gosh marketing video i don't even want to think about what this one looks like <laughs> oh instagram fashion that's kind of interesting the new sheriff in town okay Let, let's let's see what we got here Interesting. Interesting. I'm going to play this just to see what it's like. to do that let's go look real fast first of all you'll notice that they over here where they have their slides they have little transitions underneath them and it's, what I like about it is it does a good job of basically telling you you know what to do through everything now she if I'm not mistaken is a background Let's go check that. Or she might be, no, I don't think she's a PowerPoint or a YouTube. Let's see what background does. So we've got a little video here. That's what's making her work. So they've pulled up a video from somewhere and they're using that. I'm guessing the background is blank. In other words, all we want to really see is this, this lady. So we're not really all that interested in what our background is. Interesting. It's a nice one. Okay. Let's go look at something we're more familiar with, shall we? Oh, so I went into templates. I'm going into education. And I'm going to go into teacher. Ah, now we're going somewhere that is a little more familiar country. Watch out for those pros, pros, because that means we can't use it. Oh, five quick facts. Okay, let me show you where I went, just so you know. I went over here and I clicked on the pancakes, you know that. That's the technical term for this little icon. I clicked on the pancakes and I went down here, the templates. And then I 
went through it and I've ended up in teacher. Watch out for the pros because we can't use those. But here's one that looks kind of interesting. So I'll preview it just to see what it is. I'm on board. Okay, so I'm going to use this template. And I'm going to go in here to the beginning. And I'm going to start working within the uh, setup that I have here. And I'm going to call this six. I'm going to go ahead and keep going. Six facets, which is huge. That's okay. I can clean this up. You know how to do this. So I'm going to clean this up. I'm going to bring it up a little bit. Go ahead and I will highlight the F A C A T S. I'm going to highlight my letters in here. And I'm going to make them smaller so that it all kind of fits together. And I'll go up here and I'll go huh, da, 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 da. I'll just start letting it get smaller and smaller and smaller. Right? This is nothing new. You know this. And let's see. And I'll stretch it out. It's moving it. Hello, I want to stretch you out. I don't want you to be that little box. There it goes. Just had to find the right handle to grab it by. Now, this other stuff that's here, I just might get rid of that. I don't need it. I don't need that word. And I don't need that little line thingy there. I'll probably leave that. Okay, so now I'm here. And if I want to go back in, I could go in and finish off my writing. And again, I got the same problem. My words are too big. So I got to get right there on that. And I can drag it down. Okay. I like number one. I mean, I like the way this looks. You know, if I wanted to, I could go in and maybe change up the actual number here. But I think you're good with it. And then down here, the next slide, is where I want to start taking off. And so here, I would basically drop in and put in the different names of the different facets. And then I would start playing with how I'm going to explain them. Okay. And I can do that through images. See, it's right here. It says insert an image. Okay. So I'll go up here and I'll do an add. And After I've sat and thought about it a while, yeah, thanks. <laughs> I'm going to click on my little plusy sign over here. I'm going to do a search. Okay, so let's see. Explanation is understanding about the right approach, understanding how things work. Uh, let's try that, how things work. Now again, you know, we're kind of limited here as to what we can use. OK. 
Okay. And I'm not going to stop there. Remember what he says over here. Let's go back and look at the assignment. So what he's pushing you to do, he being me, is he's pushing you to really think this through. Okay, so I've got a good picture there for meaning making, don't I? That's what they're doing right now. And I'm going to slide that picture up just to give me a little more room. And so under explanation, what would transfer that? What would that look like? In other words, what would be an example of a transfer in explanation? Okay, well, let's go back here. And I um, think I'll go this time and go back to my image thing. What is character? Let's, can we look at character real fast? Let's look at character. Okay, fine. Looks like he's not going to let me have that one. All right. I'll go back to my beautiful image thing. And, oh, he's only going to let me have the one? Ah. Ah. Okay. Well, guys, you know, there's always a way to get around something. Let's try it one more time, shall we? So I'm going to go into add, and I'm going to add. Now I see why I had uh, this paid for. <laughs> so I may have to come back here and just use language. In other words, just use words to describe transfer of explanation. Let's see what we got so far. Okay, fine. Let's go back in here. This little shape thingy, I don't know what its point is, so I'm going to get rid of it. And again, I'm, I'm back here with this. So it looks like we're going to be able to use maybe one picture, and then the rest of it's going to have to be words. Fine. I can live with that. Unless somebody out there yells at me long enough. Uh, to go and actually get a paid account that I just share with everybody. Okay. Okay, so it's telling me I'm in edit mode and I need to go to create mode. Boom. Boom. See? See what I'm being? Now I know what I'm doing. Sort of. So now I'm over here and I can start really working on what I want to do. So let's go down through here and find what we were looking for. There's images. I can search an image. I can upload an image.
Now, don't you do this. You be a little more creative. So what have we learned? Well, first thing we've learned is switch over to create, Steve. It makes it a heck of a lot easier to use. And then you've got all of your different scenes over here, as you can see. And then I've got my ability to search for images. Let's go ahead and close all this out. Okay, let's see. We had props. Let's see what props do. Oh, got to watch those pro things. Okay. I put it in here. Okay. So it's just a picture. Fine. All right, so that was props. Shapes is shapes. We know what shapes are. Here we are with images. We just did that one. Here we are with videos. Search video. Huh. So what would be a video we might put into this? Explanation is all about how something gets done. Okay, so it's saying replace my, I assume that's probably a video right there. Want to do it? Let's do it. Just for the heck of it. Ooh, that's kind of cool. And what is this? Just clouds? Let's see what happens. Oh, kind of slick. Now I can move all this stuff around and move my picture up there and move that over to there. Ooh, I'm liking it. I don't know what the stars are for. We could probably get rid of them. Pam, go away, stars. And get rid of that star. Get rid of that star. Get rid of that star. Okay. I'm starting to like what I'm seeing now. What have we learned? Well, first of all, when you're in edit mode, you want to go over to create. And that way, everything opens up for you. And you're able to have access to everything. I don't like the fact that I can't really see it before I throw it in there. Kind of can see it here. Yeah, there it goes. You just had to wait for it. You had to wait for it, Steve. Be patient. There we are. Oh, I see you get a you get a watermark on it. Okay, fine. You getting the idea? It's not as easy as something we've done before. Oh well, gosh, it sure makes an interesting uh, PowerPoint. Let's review. I started all this craziness by going over here to the quick menu. Once I logged in. I came down here to templates or blank Powtoons. Why don't we look at that, Steve, and see what that might look like. And now we're back to that look that we might want to have. 
Um, 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 uh, what the heck? Let's do cartoon. And I want to make sure I'm in create. You know what this looks like to me? This looks an awful lot like Vion. Let's throw him in. So we have an intro. Oh, these are cute. Oh, look. Here's the intro that uh, someone used in a video. It's in our module that talks about how to make them that it talks about six facets of understanding. Don't copy it, but you can look at it. Let's grab this guy. Your title here in subtitle. Oh, starting to like this. Okay, go over here, make a new slide. I didn't put anything in there because you know how to do that. I don't have to teach you that. Okay, so now we're over here and we're looking at, what do we want to look at next? Uh, I don't need intros. I need specifics. Ooh. Ooh, I'm liking this. Ooh, situation. Oh, my. Okay, let's go into situations. Bingo. I think we found our home. Uh, I got to watch out for these pros. I almost clicked on a pro there. That's the only bad part about it is I can't really grab what I want. Okay, so I just put him in. Oh, he's angry. We're sorry that you're angry. <laughs> he got a little upset that, didn't he? Okay, so let's swap him out. I'm going to put something else in here. We're sorry you're angry, sir. This is very, very beyond like. I like it. I could spend some quality time playing around in here. And then our ad is everything still here. So it's not like we've lost anything. We can still do everything. So what do we do with it, Steve? Okay, so now I'm ready to do my Powtoons. I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to save it, and I'm going to preview, and I'm going to export it. So, here we go. So, it says down here, is your Powtoon ready? And I'll say, export. Okay. And then it says, how do you want to, how do you want it to be? Now, the problem with all of this is, as you can see right away, is that we don't have access to the really cool stuff. Not the end of the world. Not the end of the world. What I can do is... I can get to where my Powtoon is located. In other words, the URL that it's located at. So I can go preview. I can look at it. There it is. That's cool. And I should be able to take this. And let's find out. Let's give ourselves a new tab. Let's paste it in. Okay. I don't definitely don't want to buy it now. But at least I can get it out of here just by copying the URL. Or the other thing, of course, that I can do because see, all of this is, is locked out to me. In other words, I'm not putting it into any of these. 
Wow, you put them into Instagram. That's kind of cool. I could download it as a PowerPoint. How yawny, yawny. He won't let me download it as an MP4. Okay, so if you're not going to let me do that, the only thing that I see as my um, options here is to go back out to my Paltoons. And here it is, the thing I just did today. Let's see what it lets us do. Okay. And edit, we know how to do that, thanks. And now we're back to the same problem, right? But what it does let us do, if I click on this, It lets me play it. So if I get to the point to where I can actually see the finished product, I've got a couple of ways of getting it out. Here's the last one I was just doing. So there's my URL that lets me copy that. And then when I'm inside of here, let's get to our content page. Thank you very much. And then let's go into assignments. Let's go down to where this one is. Now, all you're going to have to do would be click on the right submission button, paste in your link. There it is. And submit. And so to get the Powtoon in, it's just a matter of finding a pow the Powtoon that we can watch and then copying that video, or copying, excuse me, copying that URL that represents it. Here's this one. And then we can just put that in, and then I can watch it. I took way too much time explaining all of the Powtoon. And I apologize for it to being in a little me herky-jerking around. But I think, watch the tutorial. It does a much better job. Um, and then, let's get back together next uh, Tuesday. And then we'll do the UBD template. I'll give you a brief sort of look at it. This is probably the easiest part of all of this. Open it up. You're going to bring it down. You're going to open it up. Because we haven't really talked about the parts, and that's what I'm just going to do. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> Remember we had this before? I guess I want to cancel setup. I guess I could sit here and let it go all the way through. Let me just see if I can close that box. Nope, it's going to take me back. Wow. Wow. All right. I will get this fixed first time. And then we'll literally walk through box by box by box and fill it out. As always, if you have any questions, concerns, as I said, watch, read, watch the Powtoon tutorial. It's really good. Um, take a swing at it. If you want me, if you want to send me the link to your Powtoon before you actually post it into the assignment, I'll take a look at it. 
I'm sure it'll be great. Everything you've done so far is. Uh, and then next week, I'll get that fixed so that I can actually have the ability to open up a, a download onto this computer. And then we'll sit and do a lesson together. As always, if you need me for anything, 502-457-2937. I will see you next Tuesday.